And we're back for another Pico CTF challenge, this time Vault Door 8. Description. Apparently Dr. Evil's minions knew that, their, that our agency was making copies of their source code because they intentionally sabotaged the source code in order to make it harder for our agents to analyze and crack into. The result is a mess, but I trust that my best special agents, yeah, okay. So let's download the source and let's open it up in VS Code. And we can see it is kind of a mess. And uh, you know, you could go through and you could manually clean this up by adding spaces and new lines. Or if you have an IDE, you could go in and you could just say format the document or format source. So let's do that. And then what we can see is our very familiar structure that we've been working with for all the Volt doors, which is we have a main function that takes input and then runs a check password function. So let's take a look at check password and let's see what it does. It takes our password, it applies this scramble method, and then it defines an expected uh, array of characters and it checks if what we passed in is equal to expected. So uh, I'm taking this to be scrambled, the scrambled value of the flag and we're gonna be very interested in knowing how do we unscramble. So let's take a look. And we have this scramble method and it says scramble a password by transposing pairs of bits, meaning uh, switching the bits. So it runs through the password and it performs the following flips. So position one goes to position two. So for example, if we had zero, one, zero, one, one, one. And then uh, this won't actually show us anything, sorry. So let's, let's say we had this. We're gonna switch position one and position two. So that would give us something like that. And then we switch position three and zero. So this position and this position, you get the idea. So we apply all these transforms. And then what do we do? Then we put that back into the array. So we make all these transforms, we replace the original value, and then we return it and we can see we have the switch bit function and it's doing a bunch of bit operations in terms of creating a mask with a shift and another mask. And then it performs an and and some oring and shifting. Okay, cool. So first thing to note is we could reverse all of this just by applying it in the opposite order. So remember we, we went and we shifted one and two. Well, if we did that again, if we uh, took positions one and two and switch them again, it would be like when you play that shell game with the cups, it would be like undoing one shift of that shell game. So I think we can unscramble this by just applying these in the opposite order. So uh, let's, let's start simply. So if we did this twice, it would undo itself. I'm pretty confident of that. So I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna skip all these steps and just start debugging immediately. And I am going to define a char and it's gonna be the A char and we will test whether what I'm saying is true or not. So we'll make this static just to make it easier to work with. And we will store this result of the switch bits in uh, C. And then we will switch it again and we'll see what the result is. We'll set a breakpoint and let's begin. Oh, oops, C is already used. We'll use D. D will work, compilation error, sorry about that. Okay, so we can see flipping it, unfortunately didn't change it. So let's try something more radical. Let's flip one and five, one and five. Let's see if that gives us an actual change where we see the, the char value. Ah, all right, so now it changed from A to capital C and then back to A, lowercase a. So great, so we've undone this by reapplying it. But you'll notice there are many operations that happen. So we could undo this one by just performing this again, right? But we have all these operations that happen. We switch one to two, three to zero, four to seven. So what we need to do is we need to undo it in the opposite order. So meaning we'll undo this, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, et cetera, to get us back to our original starting point. So let's go ahead and let's start uh, programming this, setting this up. So we will return a char array. We'll call this unscramble. And we'll say it takes a char array of scrambled chars and we uh let's see just thinking about yeah this this will work i'm going to take all this code and we're going to be looping over scrambled chars 
I'm just fixing the variables here. And then we are going to switch the order of this so that it properly cancels itself out. Almost done. I wish I knew a better way to do this, but I don't. All right. So now uh, I think this will work. I think we can eliminate our initial test here and we can go down and take this expected array and let's use this up here. So we'll define it up above expected and then we will try to unscramble. Oh, and I need to make that static. This is just a, a Java thing. Don't worry too much about that. Unscramble. Uh, it's just a way of making it a pure function is the best way to look at it, not something where you need to instantiate a class. So I think this is going to be the flag. Let's give this a shot. We will run through to right after this and see if it succeeds or fails. And we can see there we have what looks like a flag, some more bit shifting. All right, cool. So it's still kind of a pain to grab though. So let's go in the debug console and we'll do string dot value of Sorry, had some pre-completion there. And we'll say flag. And that gives us it in a single line versus being uh, an array of chars. So now let's try to submit this. And it works. Cool. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, you can help me by liking, subscribing, or commenting. Thanks a lot. Bye.